The following is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm David. Thank you for joining me for part two of my Halloween project with Capacitive Touch Knocker. Today we're going to have a go at mocking up a quick circuit, talking through some of the basic theory of how and why this works, and also writing the basic code to get us started, which we then add all the functionality to. Let's get started. Fortunately, this is a really simple circuit. All you need is two GPIO, an input and an output. Now, you connect the two across a very high value resistor. You'll have to tune that to your application. I'm going to have to make sure that between the breadboard and the actual installation, I get this right. The GPIO out just sends a square waveform, and all you're doing is measuring the delay from when the input then responds and goes high. The higher the capacitance, the slower that will happen, or the bigger the time delay. So what you're essentially doing is using your output. In this case, I'm using green for my output GPIO to send out a square waveform. Now the input is going to change in response to that, but that is always going to lag slightly. And that lag is what we want to measure. And that will change depending on the capacitance of the circuit, or for what we're doing, depending on whether somebody is holding onto the end of that or not. And this I would expect to rise slightly behind, but once it's got somebody on the end of it, it's going to take much longer to respond. And that change in time across here is what we're looking to measure. So here's my capacitive output circuit. Uh, the two important lines are the red and the red and the white, which are connected to the input and output lines, uh, the input and output GPIOs as we've defined them. I've actually added a resistor uh, and a ground connection just for a bit of visual debugging, so I can see that the output is pulsing with an LED. It gives me a bit more of an understanding of what's going on. Uh, and I've also added the yellow line, which is essentially your sense line. So this will be connected to the door knocker in the final. And if you touch it, the circuit responds. To start with, I kept it really simple and just wanted to create that initial output post. So um, started with import time and import rpi.gpio. This obviously gets you control of the time and the GPIO output on the Raspberry Pi. Um, then set up a few variables, in this case, GPIO in 17, GPIO out, out I'm using 27. Uh, the pulse time, now this is the frequency with which you want to turn on and off the output LED. Uh, start with just put something arbitrary and I think I started with uh, 0.1 of a second, which means ultimately I'm gonna get five flashes a second. So uh, 0.1 off, 0.1 on. Uh, touch limit, we don't know yet what this is going to be, come back to it later, but just put an arbitrary value in for now and set up a loop. Now this is going to be while true and an infinite loop, just continue the script going and continue that uh, square, square wave output. Once you've got your output going, the LED is perfect for the feedback on this. The next thing we need to do is set up an event listener for the input pin. So in this point I added GPIO uh, add event detection. Uh, and I put this as a both event, so it's going to detect rising and falling for the context of what we're doing. That gives you sort of twice the latency, so it's going to detect the time delay between the rise and the fall. Then you need to define a function to call when that event is detected. Now, all I'm going to do in this case is call that global variable so we can refer to the time that was set in the loop of when things were output. Uh, take the input time from the output time and see what it can get. As I touch the sense wire, you can see the Python script responding with the shorter and longer times. All we need to do is find out where that threshold is and set that as the activation level for the circuit. So with that really simple script and circuit, we have the basics working of a capacitive circuit. That's all we have time for today. Have you ever done any projects using capacitive touch? Have you ever built something low level? Let us know in the Element 14 communities on element14 slash presents. Join me next time when we're going to start building the final project putting together all of the different media and elements that we need to make this work. See you next time.